Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today's Tackle Tip Tuesday is going to be all about the Wolf River Rig. W-R-R. -R. Yeah, Wolf River Rig. Say that ten times too fast. All right, like I said, today's video is going to be all about the Wolf River Rig. If you guys watched Sunday's video, uh, I got out white bass fishing. Um, one thing you can do is catch white bass, walleye, and crappie uh, all on the Wolf River Rig. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So like I said, today we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a how-to. I'm going to show you some uh, methodology as far as like how to use it. Um, as far as it being called the Wolf River Rig, it's called that because people tend to use it a lot on a place called the Wolf River. And uh, yeah, the Wolf River is a place in northern Wisconsin that comes down into the Winnebago system and it's got a lot of good fish runs on it. Walleye, crappie, white bass, um, sturgeon. So some some people will swear that it's called the Wolf River Rig and that's where it originated from. There's a million different ways to use it, but realistically, since I was a child, like a little, like six years old or younger, younger, I've been using this thing and it was just always called a river rig. Uh, if you went river fishing, you knew about it. It was something you use on a regular basis. Uh, there's different variations and like iterations of it, like different ways of putting it together. I'm going to show you guys the most basic way and the easiest way to fish it. Okay, so that big rod there is a very multi-purpose uh, scenario rod. I still have to build, I just reminded myself, I still have to build a, a rod holder for all my long rods because they don't fit in this basement. So let's take a look at how this is put together. Okay, so as I showed you guys, this is a very big rod. And I have it set up right now for that Wolf River rig because that's the last thing I used um, in the in Sunday's video. You you guys will see it right here. I have man, I really got that in there good. Um, I have my weight right here, and then it's going to be a little difficult to show you here. So. I'm going to show you the breakdown of it and I'll go into detail what the, you know what these all are. So this is just a drop shot weight. A lot of people use pencil sinkers. Um, it's just a big long version of this. Uh, so this is a drop shot weight, but a pencil sinker will be like that long, uh, you know, three eighths, quarter ounce, half ounce, depending on the river current. And that's basically um, going to be your bottom uh, section of this thing. Uh, the line I have tied from the weight itself over to what is called a three-way swivel. This guy right here. Like I said, I'm going to show you guys like everything individually, but I'm just showing you how it's tied on right here. So you have your main line. This is braid. I have, I want to say it's 30, 30 or 40 pound. It might even be more than that, but it's suffix 832 braid. Um... I can't remember the size of the swivel. I wish I would have kept the packaging, <laughs> but it's a half, you know, it's a pretty decently light uh, three-way swivel. So you have one going to your braid, which is your main line. You have one going to your uh, dropper line, which I'll get into detail on like how to build this, but my dropper line, uh, they were biting at that time was, uh, this is about 24 inches or 20 inches, maybe a foot just underneath of, uh, two, almost two feet. And then you have your main line that comes off of that. So the only way I can show you this is if I back way up over here while keeping that close to you guys. So that's that's a swivel. And then as you can see, I have my main line down to just a standard hook. Here, I'll put it right in front of my face like that. Uh, this has got a round bend to it. Um, you can use drop shot hooks. Um, some people swear by... Um, what are they called? Like the Aberdeen, like the gold Aberdeen hooks and stuff like that. Uh, just depends on what you want to use for the day. I like that circle hook 
for the sake of, um, basically for the sake of not needing to like snap the line to get a good hook set, that hook is designed, it's, it's kind of in between, uh, here, let's look, I'll show you what I'm working with here. Okay, so that hook that I'm using, I don't have the box of them right now, but these are, um, these are Gamagatsu walleye gap hooks. And uh, if I can get one. So if you look at this, the point runs parallel to where the, the actual eye is. And the way this is set, when you set the hook on this thing, uh, the round gap in here helps the hook tip up into the fish's mouth. So this is very similar, but, okay, so I just grabbed a colored one so you guys can really see the difference here. So this is the one that's tied on my Wolf River rig right now. This is the exact same thing as that Gamagatsu hook. It's just a, a color-coded one. I use these in the winter a lot for tip-ups. Um, but as you can see, there's this big round gap in here. And with this one, you do this thing where you, so with the, with the round gap, you, um, instead of setting the hook, so instead of when, when you're getting a bite, instead of popping them really hard to drive the hook in, because of the way the round gap is, you literally can just pick it up, and what it does is it takes the hook, and I'll try and show you in a close-up. So as the barb is getting pulled, it wraps it around kind of like that. And uh, it allows you to do this little thing where you kind of just do a sweeping hook set and then start reeling. Because what it'll do is it turns the hook and drives it in by itself. So it's uh, it's a mechanical hook set, if you guys understand mechanics at all. Uh, if you're younger and you don't understand them, uh, basically it just allows you to kind of reel, reel hook set in. Um, doesn't take a lot of effort, and uh, the fish almost never swallow. It ends up somewhere around their mouth. Um, but it works really good for live bait. And I was running minnows this weekend, and that's so that's why I have that on there. Uh, another thing you guys can use, let me, I'll grab that real quick. Another thing you can use are these things called flies. Obviously, if you're a fly fisherman, they kind of look familiar, but these are river flies. Uh, I got these at, uh, what is that, Fremont Bait and Tackle. He's got a bunch of them on hand. Um, Another place that carries these is uh, the Bait Box and Fort Atkinson. Um, but yeah, that's a really simple thing. So instead of that hook on the bottom of it, you have, uh, you just, you tie the fly on there and you can run these with bait, but nine times out of 10, if it's a white bass run or walleye run, you don't actually need bait. Um, there's a technique to it. I don't have it mastered by any means. There's a lot of other guys out there that have uh, it's called pulling flies. If you ever hear someone say, hey, I was pulling flies and I got a bunch of fish on it, that's what they're using. They're using these with a rig very similar to that. Uh, a lot of times it's a double rig, so they have two flies running like in tandem with each other in the river uh, column. And uh, yeah, it beats the heck out of rebaiting every five times or every time you get a bite and you lose a fish. I probably, this weekend I probably fed... <laughs> Probably fed like 20 of my minnows away. I had like three dozen, I left with none. Uh, and I ended up only with like, I thought I had a lot more, but I had like 15 or 20 white bass. Uh, there's people that go out there with these flies and get 100, 200 white bass in, in a day. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna show you basic, uh, basic river rig. We're not gonna call it a wolf river rig because somebody's gonna fight me on the idea that it's not the same exact way as you build those, but. So you need a three-way swivel, a weight of some kind. So uh, these are half ounce, I think. And uh, that's, I mean, it's gonna be hard to show you this way, but. Um, all right, so sw three-way swivel, weight for the down rig. Um, what I do is I will put six pound test from the bottom to the weight so in case you get snagged with this guy right here you don't lose everything so the main line like I said was like 30 or 40 pound braid so that's coming off of here and then the dropper line is six pound so if the dropper line is six pound and you get hung up right here obviously your 30 pound braid is gonna snap that very easily you won't lose everything okay so then 
So I'm just going to kind of piece it together here for you guys. So I used 12 pound for my main leader. So that's line coming from here. So that's the 12 pound. And then you can either do, uh, like I said, you can either do one of these hooks. I mean, even these work good. These little walleye gap hooks. I think this is like a number four or number six or something like that. Might even be a number eight. I actually flipped the right way. So main line, dropper line. Dropper line is six pound test. Main line off of uh, your swivel going back to your lure or your bait hook is going to be 12 pound test. I know a lot of guys will use 8 or 10. I just use 12 because I don't want to hook into like a, a catfish or a, uh, like a carp or something and have them break that off. Uh, especially because instead of using that, you could use flies, which I mean they're pretty cheap, but for the most part, you don't want to end up breaking off um, you know, the fly or the, the swivel or whatever. So by having that as a 12 pound test uh, main line, going back to these, as long as it's something halfway limp, if it's too stiff, you won't, you won't get as much action on these. And I know that for a fact. So, you know, eight pound could be an option, even 10 pounds. So keep that in mind. Okay. So that's the basics of that. Now, what I'm going to try to do here is explain ahead of time of what I'm doing in the, um, in the video I'm going to put in, in a second here. Uh, it's just going to be a clip of this weekend. Uh, obviously if you haven't seen what I did or like the video, I'll link it at the end of this video for you guys to watch. Um, it'll be at the very end of the video and it'll be basically how this is put into action, but I'll put in a little clip in a second here on, um, what I'm doing is working, um, what's called a current seam. And, uh, I only fish two places really to, to find these fish. And that's because I, I grew up fishing river. So I tend to know where they're kind of going, even though I, I don't really fish uh, white bass all that often, but, um, basically I'm fishing a current seam. And what you do is so like, this is the current seam slack water, um, the actual current going through here, this is where a break in the, the slack water, a lot of times you'll have a back eddy, uh, where the water looks like it's going back upstream and actually is, it's, it comes back around in like a conveyor. Um, that's where I'm fishing right here. So I'll, I'll stick that in there right here. Okay, so like as you can see, this is later in the day. Um, the spot that I was fishing earlier was a lot deeper. Uh, this ended up being a shallow spot where all the males were kind of piling up. Uh, and these guys were actually nice enough to let me kind of tuck in in line with them. And if you if you pay attention in the video, I don't know if you, you'll be able to see it real good, but uh, we're all in kind of a line because we're all fishing the same current seam. And uh, <laughs> turns out the northern part of the current seam had piles of fish waiting to go up current. And that's why you fish the current seam, because it's where the fish kind of uh, back up. It's like a traffic jam. Uh, and if you guys ever get out and you're new to the river, look for current seams and find ones where there's a back eddy next to it because uh, the water coming around like a corner or a bend is going too fast for the, the fish to just keep going. So they'll take a break in that current seam. Uh, that's the simplistic way of putting it, uh, or the simplest way of putting it. Uh, like I said, putting a box like this together, I don't want to tip it too far, but you know, hooks, split shots, drop shot sinkers, you can put pencil sinkers in your dividers. Uh, this is all my basic river stuff. Uh, the, the three-way swivels, this one's empty right now, but it's, it's what I used to use for my 
uh, drop shot rigs too, so I just had inline swivels uh, to tie those up and basically make it so that I have everything at hand. Um, but I think that's the gist of it. The, the, the simplest thing I can tell everybody is going to be when you first start fishing it, uh, start with a longer dropper. So say you're fishing four feet of water, make a two foot dropper. So, you know, guesstimate two feet, uh, tie. What I'd like to do is, so this is the dropper line. I'll take, I'll take two feet, stretch it out and I'll tie that onto my, uh, my three way swivel. Then I'll make sure that it's actually a little bit longer than two feet. So you have a little extra line and then put your drop shot weight on there, put your split shot on there. Or if you want to use pencil sinkers, use your pencil sinker on there. And that's, that's the gist of it. I mean, it's really simple. Then for your main line, that, that 12 pound that I told you guys about, when you're doing your main line for distance, uh, depending on the, the action of the bait. So I've actually seen people use, uh, uh, what are they called? Like floating Rapalas, different, different types of crankbaits, stuff like that. I've seen people use those on there to keep the, the crankbait in the middle of the water column, uh, you know, in place basically. Uh, but what I like to do is by default, that's why I use that bigger rod, the long rod, um, is I'll make my leader line. So let me think <laughs> main line, swivel, dropper line, leader line will be as long as my rod is sometimes just a little bit shorter, just so it's easier to hook up on my rod. But so that's like a six and a half foot rod, almost a set. Actually, no, I think that's a seven foot rod. So the, the leader line is about six, six and a half feet long. Uh, and by doing that, it imparts a different kind of darting action on your, uh, like if you're using flies, uh, it, that's, I mean, that can be the difference between making it or not. So what I like to do is start out long and work your way back until you start catching fish, but always give it a little bit of time. Sometimes you got to actually land on the fish to get it to work. But otherwise, that's the gist of it. I mean, you have your dropper, your leader line, and your swivel. Uh, anything else past that point, you'd have to experiment, play with it yourself. You can do double leader lines. Uh, some Wolf River rigs have like a double line coming off the back of them, so you can run two flies in parallel. Uh, that makes it look like there's a little school of minnows down there. Really gets fish fired up. And uh, you can run worms on it, leeches on it. Um, worms, leeches, minnows. Any live bait you want to put on there, you can do that. And then it's not limited to rivers. I want everybody to understand this is, it's a river rig, but it's basically a lindy rig. It's the same thing. Um, so like if you're in a boat, a kayak, or a canoe, and you're trying to fish... Uh, along like a brake line or something like that and you want to keep it exactly two feet from the bottom you give yourself that two foot dropper with the, the drop shut sinker on the bottom and you can do the same thing in a in a river or a, in a lake and you know when you're fishing in a lake you cover more water when you're trolling so go ahead and drag that around or tr use the wind and drift with it uh, just depending on how fast you need to go to keep the the bait up off the bottom because you got to keep in mind that long dropper wants to so if this is a swivel, that dropper wants to drop the bait down unless there's a certain amount of drag keeping it up there. So that's why it works really good in the rivers. And uh, I really hope you guys take this and use it. Um, it's a big thing that, like I said, I haven't done it in a while. A lot of times I go to rivers, I try new things, so I don't really go back to my old good things. But after this weekend's you know video and how good it's it's it works and it's a very very fun technique once you learn how to use it um uh, i'll probably definitely coming back to it again so gonna cut things short here if you're not new here you know what's up but if you're new here please just remember to